What are five things that you should avoid doing in order to improve the way that you communicate with other people? Hi, I'm Skyler. Today we're going to talk about that. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you things that you can do instead of those five things in order to improve your chances of communicating with other people and helping make sure, make sure that everybody gets their needs met. So let's get right into it. The five things that you want to avoid when you're communicating with other people are judgment, criticism, punishment, reward, and compromise. I call this radical nonviolence because some of these things may sound a little strange to you if you haven't been around this before. So let's get right into it and talk about each one individually. The first is judgment. And judgment is anything that implies wrongness on the part of the other person. Now, nobody likes to feel wrong and nobody likes to feel like they're being judged for the things that they think, feel, or do. Introducing judgment into communication will only really ensure that the person you're trying to communicate with is gonna become defensive or at least closed off to the perspective that you're trying to share. In all likelihood, what it's really gonna do is inspire the other person to try and prove that you're wrong not them, and in this way, it's gonna make sure that nobody feels heard or understood. The second thing that you want to avoid is criticism. Criticism is like judgment, but instead of implying that someone is wrong, you're communicating to them that they are failing or not doing good enough at whatever it is that you're communicating about. Much like judgment, people don't wanna feel like they're being criticized and they don't wanna feel like the things that they're doing are not good enough. Failure is not something that makes anybody feel good, and it certainly isn't a good way to open them up to trying to see your perspective or make them feel like they're being heard. What criticism is likely to do is either make someone defensive, to make them feel like they need to prove that they are doing a good enough job, or to make them feel shame or embarrassment, and that is not likely to inspire them to have a positive interaction with you in the future. The third thing that you want to avoid when communicating with people is punishment. Punishment is using force or coercion, the threat of force, in order to try and get people to do something that you want them to do. Do what I want or else. Even more than feeling wrongness or criticism, people really don't want to be punished. People will do all kinds of things to avoid punishment, including doing things they wouldn't otherwise do, such as lie or steal or something else that they wouldn't otherwise choose in order to avoid being punished. But at minimum, punishment will not make the person you're communicating with want to have a positive interaction with you. Quite the opposite. Punishment is much more likely to motivate people to try and assert their own autonomy by disobeying whatever it is you're trying to get them to do and then taking actions to avoid being punished. Now, these last two items may seem a little bit counterintuitive, and they are the reason why I call this radical nonviolence, but if you stick with me, I'm going to explain why these are very critical components and things you should avoid when you're communicating with people. So the fourth thing that you want to avoid when communicating with people is reward. Reward is offering something that the other person wants in exchange for them doing what you want them to do. Now, this one doesn't sound too bad, right? If you're going to be doing something that you don't otherwise want to do, you might as well get rewarded for it, right? That sounds okay on the surface, but what happens if you don't do what the other person wants? When you don't do what the other person wants you to do, you are then being denied some act of kindness that was being offered to you. Now, how does that make you feel when that happens? Does it feel good to be denied some reward because you didn't perform up to expectations or do what was asked of you? Do you feel ashamed? Do you feel embarrassed? Do you feel judged? Do you feel like you're not good enough? When you break it down, reward is essentially judgment, criticism, and punishment all rolled into one. So finally, the fifth thing that you want to avoid when communicating with people is compromise. Now, compromise is when you agree to sacrifice something that you want in exchange for the person that you're interacting with to also sacrifice something that they want. So this is a lose-lose disguised as diplomacy. At a foundational level, nonviolent communication is about identifying the needs of each person involved in the interaction. When you use compromise, you bypass the search for everyone's needs and you just try to seek a solution that 
that assumes that if nobody gets what they want, that somehow that's better for everyone. Unfortunately, that won't create a very lasting solution, and eventually the unmet needs will pop up in the form of some new want that will try to satisfy the need that was never identified or met by the original compromise. And so as a result, the process of conflict will continue since nobody's needs were identified or met. Obviously, this is a very brief introduction to these concepts, and so in the future I'll be discussing them each individually, but now let's talk about things that you can use instead of judgment, criticism, punishment, reward, and compromise in order to have healthier interactions with people so that everybody can get their needs met. The first is to both speak and listen with empathy. So instead of trying to identify judgment and criticism in communication, even if it is there because of the person you're communicating with, if you instead try to identify the needs underlying what is being communicated, then you can make steps towards trying to meet those needs for everyone involved. Now, most needs fall under one of the following categories, connection, physical well-being, honesty, play, peace, autonomy, and meaning. These are obviously broad categories that can be broken down to any number of levels, and they may not even encompass everything out there, but these are a good starting point for identifying the types of needs that could be underlying a conflict or a way of communicating that could instead be getting wrapped up in things like judgment and criticism. And finally, one powerful tool that you can use is to reflect back what you've heard from the other person to try and make sure that you've identified the need that they're expressing and you're making them feel like they are heard and understood. If you've managed not to make the other person feel judged or criticized or made them worry about being punished, then why not take that extra step and try and ensure that they're feeling heard by reflecting back what you heard them say. If they don't agree that that's accurate and it doesn't accurately represent what they've been trying to communicate, then you've learned something valuable and you can ask for clarification so that you can truly understand what it is the other person's trying to say. And once you get to the point where you can communicate back to them accurately what they're saying, and once people are able to say, yes, that is exactly what I was trying to say, then you've taken an important step towards identifying those needs and ensuring that everyone can get their needs met even if they don't get what they initially wanted. So what do you think about these tips for radical nonviolence? I always love to have your feedback. It gives me an opportunity to reconsider my perspective, potentially learn something new. Thanks for taking the time to watch this all the way through to the end. If you enjoy what you saw here, um, Please subscribe and so you can see more content like this. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.